All right, so we're heading over to um. Uh, oh. oh, the best way to program to to program your GPS if you can is on the ground. Okay, so um, we're where are we going direct to? We got direct to Zephyr flight? Hills. Right, direct so you gotta to. Got to pick an airport, so let's go direct to okay. Zephyr Hills. All right. Well, I always do that every time. You can actually just use it, use it and take it down to the nearest if you want to, and it'll you'll find Z Hills. It'll be close by. I'll do that next time. And uh, Zephyr Hills, okay. Activate, yes. Yeah. Activate that. Enter. Now, hit your procedure <coughs> button to find this instrument approach. All right, procedures. You're going to select, select the approach. approach. Let's try it again now. Procedure button. Procedure. Enter says yes. Oh, enter. Yeah. Duh. All right. Now, what we're flying is the RNAV-5. 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 GPS. Oh. Enter. enter yep. Right. And <coughs> where you want to go, we're going to start. We're going to go to the Kansas intersection. Kansas. So go down to Kansas. We hit enter. Enter. And... Load, activate, enter. Yeah, we. And if you were if you were en route, if you were far, further up, say we were coming down from Atlanta, we're up there over over uh, Ocala. We think we're going to get this approach. Gotcha. We okay. Can load it and leave everything else the same. But once you activate it, the approach becomes active. So you really don't want to activate an approach until you're cleared for it. But let's go ahead and activate it now. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, so that's going to load it. Okay. And oh, so I don't need to go push back. Your procedure button. Uh, procedure. And activate the approach. Okay. Uh, okay. Now. There. Now uh, it's active, correct? Yeah. And we want to set our direct track. One seventy six. Now. Six one seven or one seven five one seven six right there. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it. Now we're set up. <coughs> Excuse me. Tabitha Traffic, Cessna 402 is taking runway 32 for an eastbound departure. Tabitha. <laughs> Turn indicator is working well. Airspeed at zero. Altimeter is set. And we'll slowly add in full power. Right rudder. Right rudder. Speed's coming alive. Instruments are in the green. And rotate. All right, let's go ahead and get the uh, hood on. Okay, you your I controls. Them. I got them. Okay, I got the controls. Right, you got them. <clears throat> we can turn on our course at any time. Roger that. Okay. Terminal traffic system 402 is turning left crosswind. One way three two. Terminal. Nice standard rate turn. is uh, three miles to <clears throat> Entering uh, straight in for runway Keep a standard turn going. Keep a standard turn going. There we go. <clears throat> Terminal traffic, Cessna 402 is turning downwind, runway 32. Terminal traffic. Actually, uh, go ahead. An interesting thing about this is that since your next point is Kansas, 
Okay. Yes, sir. And we're off a little bit, but we can push the direct two button, and it's going to say Kansas, and we just hit enter, and it'll give us a new course to Kansas. Oh, I see. Okay. Our new direct course is 151. I see that. Tamanor traffic says to 402 as exited to pattern. Tamanor. All right, I'm going to. Oh. One five one mark. Going to monitor tempo approach. Let's just level at two thousand because that's what. Oh, two thousand, like. you got it, yes, yeah, sir. That's our transition altitudes. It is this. okay. Let me get his wings level here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, one two. Ah, heading indicator pretty close. There we go. Got this spot on. Uh, there's 2,000 right there. Get my airspeed the line right there. Push the nose over. And I can start reducing power now. Down to 2350. There's 2350. Pitch the nose down a little bit. There we go. Okay, my power's good. All right, we got her. Got her trimmed out pretty fast. Huh? Maybe not quite enough. Just a, just a little bit. There we go. You know, Mr. Jim, it seems like every day when I fly, let me get us back on course. Uh, you know, when I first fly, I don't know when this will ever end, but um, there's always a kind of like a pit in my stomach. But once I'm in the air, it, it all goes away. Yeah. Is that is that normal? Yes, for me. Did you say it is to you? Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, I'll let you know when it goes away. Okay. All right. All right. That's that's good to hear. All right. It's somewhere north of nine thousand hours. I tell you that. <laughs> Shit. It really depends on what I'm doing. I don't get any any tenseness at all. Uh, or, you know, like a routine flight in a 172, so yeah. that doesn't bother me. If I'm going into into IMC or if I'm flying an unfamiliar airplane, yeah. that's, that's when I start tensing up. And it, I got it does go away once I'm airborne. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that it, I'm tense. It's it's just, I don't, I, that's what I mean. I don't know what it is. I'm not nervous. I'm not scared or anything like that. I just got like a kind of a pit. But once I'm airborne and I'm flying, it, it, within just a few minutes, yeah. it, it goes away. Like right now, I'm I'm good to go. But and what we do here is not a natural thing. This is an unnatural. Yeah, clearly, right. Twenty-three seventeen. Thank you. Okay, well we're uh, we're right up on Kanza. Yeah, we're a mile and a quarter away from it. And then I go from there to Brunt. Right. Now, when I pass Kansas, my my uh, uh, dist uh, my track will change. Correct? Yes. Okay. All right. This unit will give you a lot of information. <clears throat> okay. Well, there's you know Garmin's got some really neat uh, learning videos out there. I'll watch. This is a Garmin 430, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I will make sure I uh, do my homework tonight, and um, that'll be part of it. A lot of those videos are not. They're not. Garmin, but they are individual people who have put stuff about yeah. Garmin, and yeah. that's, that's really better than the Garmin stuff. Yeah, and that's what I'm referring to, actually. Oh, okay. Garmin has some, too, but they're not, they're just not, they're, they're not as good as the one, the third-party stuff. The next, they, next uh, there was this, 138, okay. So turn the airplane first. Turn the airplane first I mean, you to can, you 138. Can, yeah. Remember nice. that turning the knob turn. doesn't doesn't keep you on course, right, but turning right. the airplane does. Roger that. There we go. One thirty. I recommend yes. that we fly our approaches at ninety knots. At ninety okay. knots, okay. Ninety knots is right at a hundred miles an hour. Yep. Okay, so while we're in this transition, is a good time to uh, to slow the airplane. 
to its approach airspeed. To its approach and airspeed, okay. The reason you want to be there is because you want to be in the flap range when you're flying an instrument approach so that if you break out at minimums, mm -hmm. and, you know, at minimums on an ILS, 200 feet, and you're right near the end of the runway, right you want to be able to right dump right the flaps right 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 without see. damaging the flaps. Then when you say dump the flaps, that just means extending full flaps? Put them all the way down, okay. yeah. When I come out of the clouds on an ILS at minimums, I go idle power full flaps. Okay. Are right, you telling me when, when, you, uh, which uh, point to uh, slow the plane uh, down to uh, 90 knots, and I'll do it? Uh, I already, right here. Oh, okay, Roger that. All right. On the on the transition leg is where I slow down. Okay. So let me uh, start reducing power. Now don't reduce it too much. So if you, it, from was, 120 miles an hour, 2200 RPM, if you hold the nose up, you'll be right at 100. Oh, really? Okay. I'll, all right. I was actually going all the way down to 2000. Okay, but 2200, uh, you got it. Hold the nose up and retrim every time you change airspeed. Okay, there's 22 right there. Hold my nose up a little bit. Let me retrim it. Doesn't One full much. turn is going to put you real close yep. if you start it out. That's it right there, partner. Look at that. Yep. Hot dog, man. Good deal. Yeah. All right. We are right at, we are at 90 knots on the dot. Yeah. Maintaining our altitude. Maybe I didn't pitch up enough. There we go. There we are. Okay. I got off course by fixating on that. Get us back on course. We're almost to brunt. Now, um, since that's a, uh, a hard, that's a 90 degree left turn. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell you. It'll tell me when to start turning? When it tells you to turn, you start turning. And you'll roll out right on the center line if you do a standard rate right turn. Right to that, okay. And you have no wind. <laughs> if you have wind, it'll mess it. <laughs> I got See, the you. GPS doesn't know from wind. Right, right, right. <laughs> it, it's going to expect your ground speed to be constant. You see our ground speed is very low. Yes, so sir, it is. It's not, not going to be constant. Okay, let's listen to the weather. Three, zero, one, six, remark. Present weather identification not available. Separate traffic, please use caution, extensive skydiving activity, southeast corner of the airfield, 14,000 to below. Left-hand traffic, runway 5, right traffic, runway 23, left traffic, runway 1, right traffic, 19. Please avoid overflying the airfield. Lost a little bit of power there. Zephyr Hills Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation. One, four, five, one, Zulu, weather, wind, zero, three, zero, at, four, visibility, one, zero, seven, thousand, five, hundred, scattered, ceiling, one, zero, thousand, broken, temperature, one, three, Celsius, dew point, one, one, altimeter, three, zero, one, six, remark. Eight, three, zero, one, six. 3016, okay, let me get my turn in first. Yep. Let me aviate first. Nice standard turn here. Zephyr Hills traffic, Cessna 84402 is on a 10 mile final to runway 5, Zephyr Hills. I blew past it. Alright. Okay, and you said 3016. Yeah, and that shouldn't be much of a No, turn. that's that's it right okay. there. All right, uh, get us back on track here. And, uh, okay, now we're inside of Brunt. So, Let's zero. Set that to zero four eight. There's zero five zero four eight right now there. Now we're inside of Brunt. If you look at the profile view on your approach plate, you can see you got a step down fix to 1700 by Amer. Okay. So we want to reduce our power. Let the airplane start down. All right, drop it down to about 2,000. That should give me about a 500 foot a minute drop. That'll take about 17 or 1,800 to give you 500 feet per minute. 
Okay, let me drop a little bit more. That's 17. Am I reading it right? Yep. Oh. I got off track a little bit. Let me get us over here slowly to the right. This is a very shallow descent here. Mm. So it's a very slight descent, so you want to go now, back to your power. Now, my hard ceiling is 1,700, correct? Yeah, 1,700 okay. is a hard floor. All right. All right. Floor. That's what I meant to say, floor. Sorry about that. Stick up, power reduced. Okay to stay at 18, but it's not okay to stay at 1699. Understood. Yes, sir. Okay. Because <laughs> that's a hard floor. Okay, right to that. Let me yeah, get my power back up to 22. Maybe so I call it a hard deck. Gotcha. All right, there's my speed. Now, you my see time. this just switched to approach. It sure did, yeah. Okay. When it switches to approach, you got maximum sensitivity on that needle. Okay. And you know that we have the redundant autonomous integrity monitor working. Frame is functioning. Understood, okay. Keeping us coordinated, our speed's good. <clears throat> Altitude is good. And we're right Thunder on track. Hills traffic session 402 and a six mile final to runway five, low approach, set for hills. All right, our track is good. Speed's good, altimeter's good, we're showing level, coordinated. Ground speed is only 63 knots. Wow. Oh, we got quite a bit of wind up here. Yeah, I can feel it. It's uh, there's my 2200 right there. I got us off track about three degrees. Okay, see it's flashing. Next okay. track zero four eight. That's telling you that you're approaching Amer. Okay. And you will actually get a two from flip here. Oh. From and then back to two. Okay. So now you're inside Aimer. You can go down to your descent altitude. And my descent altitude is what you looking for, partner? I'm covering it up. Oh, you're covering it up. Okay. What's your minimum descent altitude? Did you brief that? Uh, it was a uh, 500 and. We should be in that descent though, right here. Okay. There's power back. Power back to 1700. Give me my 500 foot a minute drop. Yeah, now you can glance down at your plate. Once you're inside your final approach fix, you really don't want to look down. You need that. You need to use that short term memory. Brief the plate. Okay, it's 540. 540. Now we don't need to look down again. Right. That's all I need to know is it's 540. So right. let me reduce power more. There we go. Airspeed shot up on me. Let me slow us back down. Airspeed will do that when you cut the power. Yep, sure enough. Well, that freaks out people that haven't ever flown. You cut the power and airspeed goes up, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm trying to keep us right at 90 knots. I got off track 10 degrees, get us back on track. Yeah, and once you get, once you get set up like this, you get on track, fly heading and descent rate. The heading is constant, your descent rate is constant. It's going to work beautifully. Yeah, I've got my vertical speed at 500 feet a minute. Hey, okay, right now you keep it heading and descent right. Yeah, we're spot on right now. This, this is beautiful. And I'm. Central I mean, Hills traffic Cessna 402, three mile final to runway five, and we'll be low approach only, Zephyr Hills. And I'm I'm on 90 knots on the dot. Up oh, off track about five degrees. When you have a low ground speed like this, of course, you're, you can anticipate that with the same descent rate and a low ground speed, you're going to end up low when you break out, right? That right. makes sense. Yep, so it sure does. Your picture is going to look a little low. Right there's your minimums. Look up. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so you are a little low. So let's, yep. let's go ahead and initiate a climb. And we can initiate the climb at any time. Right However, right. you cannot turn until you pass your missed approach point. And the unit will tell you, now don't turn forward. Look okay. at your airspeed. What airspeed do we want? I want 80. Yeah. Land traffic, uh, traffic advisory, please. I want 80. That's what I want. Uh-huh. There we go. There we we want to keep our track. We want to stay on that track. To land anyone on the track. Gotcha. There's our track. Airspeed's coming down. Get it back down. To land traffic, to Senec 2871 Tango. We are simulating an engine out about four knots per miles west of the field. Come on, be wide, Mark. Go straight in runway five. Simulate an engine out of your land traffic. All right, she's coming down to 80 now. Beverly Hills traffic, Cessna 402 is initiating a missed approach. We departing to the northeast, Zephyr Hills. All right, got us back on track. Right rudder, there we go. There we go, VY right there. Maintain VY. It just feels so weird when you're under the hood. <clears throat> it feels like I'm in a space shuttle. Hey, okay, we're going to fly this to the missed approach to the published missed. Roger that. Published missed approach. Climb to 2000. Direct to Fife. Direct to Fife, okay. Now the unit knows where it is. It knows where Fife is. It's, okay. It's giving you needle guidance right now, just the same as always. All right, 2000. Drop the nose. Airspeed back. There we go. Yeah, you're turning right, though. You're drifting off to the right. Oh, I see you're that. 10 degrees right, of course. I see that. I see that. I sure am. There's my airspeed. Let me drop down to 2350. No, I want to keep the plane at okay. 90 knots, don't I? Well, you can, or you can go to cruise, either one. Okay. Now, you notice the unit went into suspend. I sure do, yes. Okay, push the OBS button to oh. unsuspend it. Thank okay, you. that unsuspends it all. Now it's giving you a track out to your holding pattern. So to zero four eight, it. right there. You stay right with it, and you go to your hold. Roger that. Okay. I think that was beginner's luck, because that sure did keep, come out all right. Heading, keep your heading in your scan, though. You're turning right. Yep, I sure. Turned right 10 degrees. Sure did. You had it nailed. Yeah, the heading indicator is matched now with my magnetic compass. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's going to be at almost... 2,000 feet, 120 knots, I mean miles an hour, sorry. Our vertical speed's good. Our coordinated. And it got us off track during my scan. There we go. That's the wings level. Beautiful. There we go. Now, this would be a direct entry, correct? Think about it. Well, it seems like we would be a direct entry since it's taking us right to it. 
from no. Mr. Pro Approach. It, it, we're, we're on the wrong side. Oh, no. This would be a teardrop entry. Yes, sir. This will be a, as, as textbook a teardrop as you can get. Yep, sure enough. You know, in my head, I'm thinking left pattern. need to be thinking the protected side, right pattern. Yeah, and uh, if, if the, uh, unless the, uh, Unless specified otherwise by the approach plate or by air traffic control. Yes, sir. Right hand turns are your standard. Gotcha. For, for a hold. Gotcha, okay. So what I want to do is cross over fives and go to the uh, the back set. Or once I cross over, well, is that when I? The easiest way to think of this. Uh huh. When you get the fives. Yep. Turn thirty degrees to the left of this course. Okay. So uh, I'm almost zero, zero eight zero. zero seven eight right zero eight zero. Okay. Oh. Uh, to the left. Oh, to the left. Oh, right. So that you would see, be. See, there's you wanting to get in over there on that side. Or you want to be on this side, so you'll have to turn left to get there. Okay, so that would be a uh, zero one eight. Yeah. So zero two, right? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Who can, who can okay. split two degrees? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh wow, it doesn't seem like we're that far. It's almost five miles away. Keep my skin on, I lost a little bit of altitude there. 2350, there we are, 2350. I'm looking at, just with uh, watching that that much, I lost uh, over five degrees. Yeah, it's really easy. See, this is saying fly left. The map is showing you off course to the right, and it's the course is to the left. And this is showing you almost 20 degrees off heading. Man, gone. They got lots of information. You need to use it. Goes back to level. There we are. I don't know what you're doing to get back to level. I don't know what you're scanning. But I'm every going. time you say I'm back to level, we start turning right. Oh, really? And this is the best indicator you've got. This one is a hell of a lot better than that one. It sure is. I see we're 12 degrees off our yep. heading now. really think part of our problem may be that we have low suction and that attitude indicator isn't accurate. Understood. Well, I'm going to start watching the turn coordinator more because I keep going. I'm watching my attitude indicator. I, I go here, 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 here. Yeah. Now, oh, when you're flying instruments, uh, when you're a private pilot, that was a perfect scan. Yes, sir. When you're flying instruments, you want to include these two instruments in your scan. You want to expand that scan to all six of them. 
Got to ride it out. You can zoom this down if that helps. Oh, yeah, man, nice. The, the unit has got an auto zoom feature. Uh -huh. And the, the problem I have with auto zoom is yes, it will zoom all the way down to about 400 yards. And, you know, way over zoomed. Right. And it, it gets too low, and I can't figure out how to reset the minimum on the auto zoom. If I could set the minimum higher, I'd use the auto zoom. I see. Uh, it looks like here in about 10 seconds, I'll be making a 30 Thanks degree. It says whole teardrop. So hold. Start your turn. So here's my 30 degree turn. Oh, well, yeah. There's my standard turn. And start rolling this out. There's 30 degrees. A little too much. Just a little too much. Not much. All right. Uh, you'll notice that the unit's direct track is now 229. So okay. do I. Do I change this? Yeah, you need to change that. That's because it's the inbound course is what they, they'll have it on. Two two nine. All right, right to that, got it. Yeah, we're flying a beautiful straight line now. You'll notice your needle is beginning to move off to the left. And that makes perfect sense because if you were inbound, it would be off to your left. So do I need to turn my heading to 229? No. Your heading is on 229. It's right where it needs to be. Okay. Okay. You just need to keep the airplane going at this at this heading, at this 02 to 03, something like that, to get us over on the other side of the hole. Roger that. I see what you're so saying. So we can yep. then turn back inbound. That makes perfect sense. Because we're just going to catch that and loop it right around. Yeah. All right, all right. Now we're cooking with gas, I get it. Okay, uh, d line traffic, connection 336. Uh, oh. Altitude 1000, uh, trying to enter downwind for runway number 5. Uh, d line traffic. And since this is a published hold, Yes, sir. The unit will stay suspended and expect you to stay in this hold for however long it takes until you do something to unsuspend the unit. Okay, I got you. All right. We'll make a turn around this thing. So this will tell me when to turn, correct? Or no? No, you'll turn when you get four miles. Okay. So you're you're on the you're on the course now. In fact, you can start at any time. You can make a nice gentle turn back around, intercept that inbound course. All right, there's a nice ten degree turn right there. Smooth and easy, smooth and easy. There we go. Uh, standard. Nothing like having these high clouds uh, to uh, give you some smooth uh, air. I know. I you know I didn't want to jinx it, Mr. Jim. Now bring it all the way around to 229. I'll bring it all the way around to intercept 229. Roger that. Of course, into the, the uh, holding fix. I got you. I understand. A nice shallow turn. I don't want to make it too steep. All right, beautiful. Coming around, nice. Very nice, very nice. There's one, five, two, coming on around. 
maintaining a 10 degree turn yes I can steepen that up just a little bit there's my standard right turn right there made that a little bit too shallow didn't I we'll come all the way around to 229 now start rolling this out Well, I blew way past that shit. Fire oh, mark. Take just, just a tiny bit. There we go. Now, we've got quite a bit of wind up here out of the east. That, uh, that's that's what's causing you to... Look at this. we got 116 knot grams. I see that. <laughs> We're all an ass. <laughs> Uh, the wind is, do you, do you recall where the wind is coming out of? The wind's aloft, I don't remember exactly, I think it was right right out of the northeast. Okay. Uh, well, it must be northwest, but okay. we got a strong tailwind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we sure do, and 115 knots, man, we're hauling ass. All right. Coming up on fives, so um, at a since I'm in a hold, do I maintain the hold or? Yeah. Or yeah, you maintain the hold, and you know if you're given a hold, when air traffic control gives you a hold, mm -hmm. in this case they would say, okay, hold is published, uh, 2,000 feet. They may give you a different altitude. The missed approach hold is 2,000, but they may tell you to hold it four. So uh, gotcha. And then they'll say, uh, uh, expect uh, further clearance, here, uh, and they'll give you a time, and they'll give you your current uh, time. Okay. In other words, right um, now it is, uh, it is... 1510 Zulu. 15, yeah, 1510. So they would say expect further clearance at 1530. Time now 1510. Right to that, all right. And you make sure you understand that so you know how long you've got. And you want to know your fuel status. You know, if you're in a hold and you're to a stage where you can't keep holding for 30 or 40 minutes without getting into your reserves, you tell them minimum fuel. Gotcha, okay. And minimum fuel is not an emergency. Minimum fuel simply says, I've got enough fuel if I can finish this flight in a normal manner. But if you hang my ass out to dry up here, it'll be an emergency. It's to an emergency. Gotcha, yep. Okay. And if you get to the point where you know you're going to enter your reserves, that's when you declare an emergency, a fuel emergency. But you should have sufficient reserve to make sure that you don't you know, you don't really have to do that. Now, you don't need to turn that. Oh, I don't? Okay. No, no. and you need to oh, be... Oh, 2 Look at this. You, yep. need to, you need to be... You need to be... So these things are straight up and down. Gotcha. So I need to finish my turn to... Just hold what you got. There now, we go. intercepting oh, it. Wait, this, man, a, this has to be kind of a visual go. intercept. Oh, you really you. can't do it. You don't have a needle to guide you. Gotcha. You just have to use, a, use your headings. <clears throat> Well, we, I was remember the 049. Yep. 049 was your heading that, that got you there, so that's about what you ought to be flying. I think if you fly a 049 heading on your heading indicator, it's going to throw you off to the west. I think it is because of the wind. But the fact is, if it does oh, yeah. a little bit, if it throws you off a little bit, it's not going to matter. Yep. Look at our ground speed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. It's really slow. Almost cut us in half. Yeah. Got off my heading a little bit. Get us back to zero four nine. Okay, now, Mark, I'm going to go ahead and clear you for the approach, okay? Yes, sir. Cleared for the same approach again. So, first thing we do is we unsuspend the unit. Okay, so that's so right where it says here. 
right there. Now, go over to procedure. Procedure. Activate the approach. Enter. Yep. No. Enter, yes. Enter. Activate the approach. Okay. Let me get my track. I'm, I got way off course here, didn't I? Well, not really. But let's see. Let's see where we, what this thing did to us. Let's look at it. Let's look at our flight plan here. It's got you going to Kansas. That's where we started, right? Uh-huh. So that's what we want. So we turn our flight plan off, and we just turn to a 240 heading. Gotcha. And we go direct back to Kansas. All right. Well, let me make a standard return. As soon as I get turned around, I will slow us down to 90 knots. But I wouldn't slow down yet. Don't. Because we, when we get up to Kansas, you know, we got we got to go all the way to Kansas. It's 23 miles. Oh, to shoot, fire. You're right. That's, okay, that's just our that. initial approach fix. Okay. All right. There's my standard turn right there. Bring this round to uh, 240. Standard turn. Maintaining my scan. Standard turn. And start rolling us out. Maybe a little too soon. Okay, now we got a message light flashing. Oh, I see that, yep. So press the message light. Set course to 240. All right, there's 240. I can press on message again, and I'm on track. I was on track. Come on, Marcus, back around here, buddy. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right. Get it straight and coordinated. The line traffic reader checked. Looks like uh, runway 5 is used for delay traffic. The line traffic 6353 Delta, we're calling in for the left base runway 5. The line. All right, our airspeed's good, showing us level, altimeter's good, vertical speed's good, heading indicator's good. We got it centered on the ball. <clears throat> Finland, Finland traffic, connection 336, uh, entering downwind for runway number 5. Uh, Dylan traffic. Dylan traffic, 6353 Delta, turning final, runway 5 Dylan. Okay, we're going to engine off track a little bit, get us back on track. All right. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Jim, have you ever flown with uh, Spencer? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Why? Uh, he and I are going to fly uh, Friday and Sunday. Uh -huh. I'm going to He's going to be my safety pilot. I'm going to log some uh, under the hood time, cross country time. Okay. With uh, what airplane are you flying? Well, I was assuming we're going to, we're going to fly the uh, the Piper. Oh, the uh, Cherokee. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know. I just I don't know what you had reserved. Well, he's got a uh, uh, Comanche, doesn't he? Uh, no, Spencer doesn't have a plane, oh, to my not, knowledge. That's not the guy. Okay, that's not the one you were talking about the other day. That no, 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 no. Uh, okay. No. <clears throat> no, he's uh, time building for uh, his commercial is what he's doing. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, and I know the young man. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's a youngster. Going yeah. uh, northwest. Uh, uh, the Well, good luck flying, uh, flying under the hood in that Cherokee. <laughs> well, you know, I, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've flown, you know, a uh, little over three hours under the hood in it. And, yeah. And you know, um, um, but look, uh, where y'all going? You have an idea? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. I think uh, we're we're gonna either. I think we're gonna hit. Uh, uh, we're going to Ocala for sure, and then from there, I think we may go to Cross City or Pine Island, and okay. then. And um, because we wanted to log pure cross country time, so well, not... if you go, uh, there's a restaurant at Willis. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know whether that matters or not. Yes, yes, it does because that's uh, and uh, there's a restaurant at Ocala. Mm. I think we want to log about four hours. So I know we're going to eat in I the middle. I had a young man that was uh, going into the Air Force and was trying to build a bunch of time. He didn't have a private rating. He could fly fine. He just hadn't bothered to get all the stuff he needed for a rating. Uh -huh. And he wanted to get 20 hours, and we had about two weeks to do it. Oh, wow. And we went out one day, and we flew up to, I don't know where all we went. We, I know we went to uh, Tallahassee and up to Thomasville and... In Georgia, <laughs> we <laughs> flew all over the damn place. <laughs> well, that's pretty much what we're going to do. I know that we're going to stop halfway in between and grab a bite to eat. I can't, I can't recommend these restaurants at either of those places because I've never eaten there. But I have heard very good things about the restaurant at Williston. Okay. Uh, but I mean, that's that's totally secondhand. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to claim that I know it's good food, because I don't. Right, I got you. Okay, well, shoot fire, man. I'll, uh, I'll let him know, and uh, and then if we eat there, I'll let you know if it if actually was good. <clears throat> but I need to get, I, I, I believe I only have about 30 hours or so uh, cross-country time, but I need under-the-hood time. Well, it is. Spencer's trying to get his uh, commercial yep. rating. Yes, sir. Right now, he's uh, got his he's a uh, he's got his PPL with the IFR add-on, and he's uh, building time for uh, commercial. So he's like looking for commercial and then CFI and then build I, time for fifteen hundred. I I honestly don't know that part, but I do know he's going to commercial. I. I Think that he actually wanted does want to do that. I think he wants to uh, he wants to be an airline pilot. Yeah. And myself, I I would just want to go to MEI and at that point uh, make a decision. <clears throat> I was hoping to get to MEI some by uh, by the end of September or October. Oh. That's, that's a lot. I know, that's ambitious, isn't it? That, that is way ambitious because you got to get your commercial, you got to get your you got to get your instrument and your commercial and your CFI, and before you get an MEI, you really ought to go ahead and get the CFII. Hmm. Uh, you've got a little over 100 hours now to get all those ratings in. You're probably okay, looking at 250 30, hours pushing, uh, of additional time. Uh, kind of right. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm only averaging about 30 hours a month. Yeah, and that's a lot. 30 hours a month is a lot of flying. I know professional pilots that fly 30 hours a month. Understood. No, that's the way I was looking at it. If if I can maintain 30 hours or more, and um, and I'm in the market for a plane, so you know, uh, if I get a plane, yeah. then then I'll get it for sure. What kind of airplane are you looking for? A Cherokee or something? Yeah, you know, just a, yeah, yeah, just a trainer. Yeah, just a trainer. 
Got us off track. There we go. Get us back. Um, it would be good if you could find uh, a, a Cherokee that, that's got one of these yep. gizmos in it. That and that's, would... that's what I'm looking for is, uh, is an IFR rated Cherokee. A beach craft would be good. You know, I'm looking for a plane in the price range of around 30000 You know, um, uh, and Jordan, Jordan, uh, once he's willing to go in on it as well, so if, if that's the case, then I can even go a little bit higher in price to like 40 But at that point, if I'm not flying it, you know, I'm a business guy first. So uh, at that point, if I'm not flying it, I need to have the plane generating income to pay for itself. I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of liabilities. I don't know how much. Uh, I don't, if you put the airplane on a uh, lease back at Tampa North, I'm not sure how effective that would be in uh, generating yeah. revenue because the uh, put them on lease back. Angela takes 20 percent cut. Damn, that's pretty high. 20 percent. Well, 20%, and, and we've got an old Cherokee that's renting at 125 an hour, and 115 an hour. Yeah. And this one's renting 125. Right. Uh, even at 150, I didn't see how the airplane could make money on a leaseback. No, like that's why I say, because your operating costs are going to be around uh, $50 an hour. And yeah, and, and then you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have insurance. Your insurance mm -hmm. is going to be about $6,000 a year. Right. And if you fly the airplane 600 hours a year, that's $10 an hour for insurance. Shit. And the oh, engine uh, is being worn out, and you're going yeah. to be, that's another $10 an hour for the engine. Yeah, that's why I said, so, man, 20%, you know, how is that profitable at that point? No, it's not. No, no, no. Well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm getting this back on track. And uh, the thing to do is is to um, is to network with some CFIs and CFIs and uh, basically rent them the airplane for their student and uh, cut out the middleman. 20% is pretty damn high, man. Uh, you'll have to locate the plane somewhere other than Tampa North if you do that. Okay, right, it's telling you, next is 138, so right. you can start your turn. So I can start my turn to 138, all right. Let me get a standard rate turn. Notice it's coming the ahead, of the, ahead of getting there. I sure do. And I sure do. That's because this intersection is what's called a flyby intersection. You don't have to go touch the intersection. I get it. There's a little Cut different Cutting symbol it. on the chart. Or a, if you look at the symbol on the chart, it's open. The symbol is open. It's got a hole in. Yep. If you if you look at the symbol and it's got it's filled in, then it's a fly over intersection, and you have to specifically fly over that intersection before you start the turn. You don't see a lot of fly over intersections. I'm going by that by ten degrees. Get us back on track. And I need to turn this to 138 as well. Let me get us on track first. There we are. Should be on track now. So I need to tune this to 138. Yep. There's 138 right there. All right. All right, got us on this track. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh. On this transition, this is where you want to slow the airplane down. So, before you okay. do anything else, yes, sir. pull it to 2200. 2200 coming up, all right. Now, hold the nose up, roll one turn back on a trim wheel. 2200, hold the nose up, and this way? Yeah, one turn. Don't, don't let it keep pitching. It'll actually, it'll, what will happen, it'll go to the same place, but it's going to oscillate. Oh, I see. Okay, so I understand. If you kind of catch okay. it a little bit, it'll, it'll keep okay. it oscillating. I got you. Okay. That's, like, that's like fucking magic. Look at that. Yep. It's just, you know, and you might have to make some little adjustments or something, but just, just minor, head on. Right, just minor adjustments.
Uh, when you when you get to where you're comfortable making that adjustment quickly, yes, like sir. you just did, yeah. in that case, you can wait until you're a couple of miles from brunt. You know, you know, keep your airspeed up and then slow down only for the approach. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, my airspeed's beautiful. Delay traffic, connection 336, entering downwind for runway number 5, uh, delay traffic. Right on track. Oh yeah, nice, very nice. Delay traffic, connection 336, uh, exiting the traffic pattern. Uh, the land traffic. Uh, one thing oh, you yeah, can way off track. Way off track. Go ahead, I'm listening. One thing you can do if you're flying with uh, somebody else doing, you know, as a safety pilot, one yes, thing sir. you can consider is is trying to do some VOR tracking. In other words, there's a there's an airway that goes up to Cross City. Okay. Yeah. And you can you can intercept. I think it's a radio off of uh, Lakeland, and you can intercept that radio and track it. And you get halfway, you switch over and track it the the other way. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And track it in, and it doesn't go all the way to Cross City. Cross City, the VOR is off the uh, airport. Gotcha. Now at Brunt. That's where I uh, start reducing my uh, altitude to 1,700. Correct? Yeah, you can, or okay. you can, or you can actually wait a little while on that. Uh, Turn into 1,700 right. is a floor at Amer. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yep, I see the arrow there. Sorry about that. You're right. My fat belly pushes over so the you, as, you're, as you're starting the approach, you want to brief the approach, okay? And by briefing the approach, I know you want to know your minimum descent altitude is 540. Your inbound course is 049, 1700 is 048. 048. Okay, so 048. And... My standard rate 1700, 450. And our missed approach, watch our missed approach, it's a straight ahead climb to 2,000. Roger that. So, you, you know, that's that's in a, that's funnel lobe stuff, you know? Yep, I got you. Yes, sir. Seven Hill oh, traffic, Cessna 402 is a 10 mile final for runway 5, tracking the GPS approach, Zephyr Hill. Get us back on track here. <laughs> yes. 64 knots over the ground. That's, yep, that's that's slow. Now, when you see that... Yes, sir. Um, ...and you're on approach, the, the thing about 90 knots, it's it's flap speed. Yeah, okay? right, right, right. On right. the other hand, you've got an approach here that ends about 500 feet above the ground. So you've okay. got plenty of room right. to slow it down some more. And if you wanted to fly the approach a little bit faster... You could. You could add a little power. Understood. But, you know, and go a little faster. But that's that's a decision thing. So when you've got something blinking. Message. Look at it, yeah. Set course to zero four eight. Yeah. And you can actually zero four eight. Oh you got it, okay. Yeah. You can oh, act whenever you change change course on this thing uh, if you forget to set it it starts to blink I just turn the knob okay and I, usually just goes away unless there's something else in there I get you I get you all right three miles from Amer and Amer's where we start reducing to uh, 1700 and then uh, yeah, well we can we can go as low as 1700 before Amer uh, and Amar has got that 1700, it's got a little Maltese cross on it. And what that Maltese cross symbolizes is if we had the WAS unit so that we could fly an LPV approach, we would have the glide slope centered at 1700 feet over Amar, and that would 
verify that our altimeter is accurate. I see. Now we're flying this strictly as a non-precision approach, so it's really not that big a deal. Okay. When you reach the point where you would intercept the glide slope at 1,700 feet, this thing's going to switch to approach mode. Oh, I see. All right. All right. There it is. So, so now's when I would pull power? Yeah, you can pull it a little bit. And with this slow of <laughs> 60 yeah, knots well, over I mean, the ground, you really you got to be careful about your descent. Once you pass Aimer, you can come down pretty fast. It's, you're not going to hit anything at 540. You've got a couple of hundred feet clearance. Uh, Roger that. All right. I'm not sure exactly how they work those approaches, but they make sure that you've got clearance. You can be so much off and so low, and you've still got clearance from obstacles. I get it. I totally get it. Well, we're on a very, very slow descent. Ground speeds. Wow. That is a heck of a headwind. Yeah. We're right on track. Oh, got us off track. It's back on track. Do you want traffic coming to 3431 Skyhawk, um, six miles east of the airport um, at 1,000 feet, inbound for close traffic, request traffic at 5, do you want traffic? Everybody else traffic, uh, still four zero two is on a five mile final to runway five, tracking the GPS approach, Zephyr Hills. I got it's right on track. About to cross Amer, and then I see there's runway five, set direct zero four eight. So we're already set. We're good to go. Oh, got us into a right turn by looking too too much, too fast, or not fast enough. Get my scan going. Get back around here. Remember, we got to get down to 540. We need to get that power reduced. Roger that. We're four, four miles out. Drop that power back. Drop back to 1700. Keeping my airspeed at 90 knots. Got a nice 500 foot descent. Staying on track. What's our minimum descent altitude? 540. Okay. Oh, get back on track, Mark. Get back on track. Three miles out. There's three miles. Temper Hills traffic, Cessna 402, three Slows mile down. panel to runway five, low approach only, Zephyr Hills. Our altitude right there. Oh, I see. We yep. All right, yep. I see it. Okay, let's initiate a climb. And give the power in. Get us to uh, 80. Yeah, it feels when you're under the hood. It, it feels weird the way that thing wants to pitch up on you, but that's yeah. okay. It should pitch up on you. 
Yeah, it feels like we're launching into space. Yeah, get us at 80 mark. It's back on runway heading 048. And you don't want to turn until you pass your missed approach point. Understood. You can, you can climb any time, the theory being that nobody ever hit the sky. Roger that, roger that. Except the space okay. shuttle okay. at okay. one okay. time. Ah, 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 right, 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 right. Over the airport, if I'm for close traffic, so let me fly. Right rudder, okay. right rudder. There we go. Heavy right rudder. There's the BY, right rudder. Keeping us at BY. Maintaining BY up, oh, got his off track here. Right rudder, right rudder. There you go. Ever done any parachuting? I'm sorry, sir. Ever done any parachuting? Uh, in Direction the military. Did you guys use the Ram Air parachutes, or did you just the round ones? Uh, we used uh, we actually used both. It all depends. Let's level off at 2,000, cruise oh. condition. I get my airspeed, push the nose over here. Yeah. All right. There we go. Up. One spin. I forgot to put that spin in there. Push nose over a little bit. I should be able to just gently let go and she ought to just be fine. Got us off track 10 degrees. That's fine. Okay, rather than yep. fly this, let's turn left to 270. Turn left to 270, all right, all right. Standard rate turn. Doing traffic pressure 343. Uh, left downwind for runway 5. Doing traffic. Get a little bit too steep. Flat traffic, Prince Charles 315, Vicar Romeo is 8 miles north of the field. We'll be maneuvering to join the 45 left down. Standard turn right here. Do you want traffic on 343, White Sky Yard, one downwind for runway 5. Do you want traffic? Alright, start rolling this out, nice and gentle. And 270 on heading indicator. Alright. I mean, hey, why don't you go ahead and take track. the hood off and just take a hood off, take us back to Tampa North. So, uh, now, I want to clear this. this. Point, uh, yeah, we want to clear this. So push the flight plan button. Flight plan button. Okay. Flight plan oh. button. Um, how yeah. do I go back? Flight plan flight button. Plan. Okay, okay, now, menu. Menu. And see where it says delete the flight plan? Oh, I sure do. Let's get that flight plan out of there. So, enter. press enter. Do you want to try to get the airport? Okay, enter uh, again. Uh, yes. For okay, now, system. close the flight plan window. And hit the direct to button and go to Tampa North. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. That traffic center is 315 at Caromeo is now 4 miles north of the field of Green River. It's going to right. 45 left down runway 5 to land. All right, partner. We're only 8 miles out. Yeah, I figured you could just use a little relaxation after flying two instrument approaches. You hadn't ever flown an approach before. We do an approach to a miss, hold, and another approach. That's pretty good. Thank you, sir. All right. Stamadar traffic, Cessna 402, currently 8 miles to the west, going to enter east. over the east. That's uh, 8 miles to the east of Tampa North. 
Yeah. The mistake people make is they look right there and call out where they <laughs> are. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, this is nice. This is, this is nice. Traffic to Insta 350 Romeo is uh, now a few miles north of the field. Oh, message. We are Scan again course to 271. Two left down and runway 5 to land. My traffic sky, uh, uh, 20 South 350 in Echo Romeo is uh, joining the left downwind runway 5 to land. Traffic on 346 Since I've been under the hood, I uh, didn't bring my uh, glasses, so, uh, oh. and I need them to see from a distance. I can't wear them and see here, because when I put them on, I look under the glasses oh, okay. at my instruments. I'm not blind, don't get me wrong, but it's oh. all just blurry. If you're, you're nearsighted. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, exactly, yep. Something, uh... Do traffic, contact 343 White Skyhawk, turning downwind. There so are... Five left at the you you can have uh, bifocals made that have, uh, and you can get cheap lined bifocals with the bottom Black half traffic, clear. Traffic, uh, three, 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 if you want nine, to, yeah, yeah, whether five, you can find them or not, but... Yeah, yeah. If you have your, next time you go to your eye doctor, you get your prescription, you can order these things through the mail. They're not that expensive. You can, it's just a, just a no correction bifocal. Right. Man, Mr. Jim, I like uh, that I idea. I like that a lot. I was in a lot of space, runway 5 to land. I had a, a friend who was an optometrist in Alabama, and he uh, he was showing me some glasses Everyone they had made. Three four zero eight 8 miles that were southeast there. Carpenter's glasses. Device. You ever seen Carpenter's glasses? No, sir. Well, he had normal, he had distant vision correction in the middle, he had a bifocal in the bottom for reading, and a bifocal in the top for looking overhead. Oh, wow. Looking over his head. Oh, there's the damn airport right there. Yeah. I, I, wonder, uh, I, I thought you saw it. No, sir, I didn't. had it in sight ever since you took your glasses off. <laughs> no, I did not see it. All right. All right. <laughs> it's just making an upwind entry here. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tamanor traffic, Cessna 402 is entering crosswind of runway 32, Tamanor traffic. Reduce power a little bit here. Start descending. I guess a vendor, very gentle left turn. And that wind up here sure is strong, you know, when we were down on the ground, it wasn't much of anything. See, even though you're not under the hood, use your damn trim. Roll that trim back a turn. It'll make it so much easier. It does, you're right. You ain't got to work so sure hard. Sure does. Good pilots are lazy pilots. <laughs> Tamanor traffic says the 402 is turning downwind, runway 32, Tamanor traffic. I like that, yep. It helps to be lazy. Zephyr Hill, connection 340 on a five mile final, for runway one, Zephyr Hill. Maybe we should get on our frequency. I we, thought we were already on it. We were on Zephyr Oh, 75, yep. 
watch your altitude. Tampa North, Cessna 402, downwind for 32, Tampa North. Since we were on the wrong frequency, it's a pretty good idea to make a call once we get on the right one. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I guess I should have reported uh, or midfield right now. Do you always fly this wider pattern? Um. No, no, actually, I normally am on the inside of uh, the uh, the roller rink or whatever that I'm building is. I'm right usually over there, over that other open field. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Tampa North traffic, Cessna 402 is turning base, runway 32, Tampa North. See, they're, they're putting this diverging diamond intersection in here. Yes, sir. The engineering company that figured out that whole idea of the diverging diamond, oh, they patented it. They what it? They patented the diverging oh, diamond. Oh, they patented it.